Had a Corey Day doing his ARCA debut. Plus, let's talk about Salem Speedway. Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. On Saturday night, I went to the famed High Banks at Salem Speedway to watch Corey Day's ARCA Series debut. So you're not familiar with who Corey Day is. Earlier this week, I posted a video and I asked, is Corey Day the next Kyle Larson? Because the 18-year-old from California has been dubbed just that. He's been an absolute force on the sprint car tours this year. He has five high limit series wins, a World of Outlaw win, and he also got his first win ever on pavement in his first career start, driving a late model stock for Junior Motorsports at Hickory Motor Speed. Speedway. So when they said that he was going to be making his ARCA series debut on Saturday night at Salem, I was like, well, I'm already headed to the center of Indiana to watch this race. Might as well go tag along and see what Corey Day is doing as well, because that is an added bonus to an already fun event at Salem Speedway. So I went out there, drove the two and a half ish hours out to Salem through the back roads of Indiana, saw some lovely small towns, a lot of towns that probably could use some money and be really nice places to live. Scottsburg, lovely downtown area. There's a little concert happening, very Americana, small town America is what it felt like. A nice change of pace, just blasting down some backcountry roads and the black wing, having a grand old time. Made it out to Salem Speedway. Corey Day qualified, I believe P5 on the day. He was third row bottom on the inside there, so I think he's P5. Pretty decent, you know, qualifying spot for a guy that has one never seen this racetrack and two never driven one of these cars before uh he did do some pit practice from what i heard at hendrick motorsports like just straight up pulling into a pit box but other than that he's never raced a full body stock car in this sense on a track like salem and if you're not familiar with what salem is it is a half mile high banked oval think about bristol just like the great value version and i don't mean that in a bad way at all it's just kind of what it is it's a scaled down version a lot rougher the uh, surface is a lot a lot, um, you know, uh, will eat tires a lot more than what Bristol would. A lot more coarse. That was the word I was looking for. My brain just wasn't finding it in that moment. Coarse. That's the word. So Corey Day starts off the race, and you know he's got the HendrickCars.com paint scheme on at the 28. It's being staffed by JRM people from the looks of it, or Hendrick Motorsports people rather. So a, a competitive car. And at the beginning of the race, he definitely struggled a bit. Starting on the bottom at Salem is never an ideal situation. You would always like to be up against the wall. The top is the lane to run around there. And in typical dirt track fashion, Corey Day eventually did find the top. And he lost some spots there at the beginning. He dropped all the way back to eighth. Uh, at one point, Greg Van Alst was trying to pass him. Uh, Will Kimmel got around him. So you can kind of, you know, gauge if you're familiar with the Arca series where he was running at competitively. He wasn't at the front up there with William Swalich, the Rev Racing guys, or or even some of the Venerini cars. Venerini, bad day overall for them. The downfall of Venerini needs to be studied at this point because the guys and girls that they have in those cars just aren't cutting it. Uh, so Corey Day, uh, eventually... Probably about the first 100 laps, I would say. Learned a lot. He went up to the wall, started figuring out how to run the high line, and nobody, nobody was running higher than him on the exit of turn four. Um, if he didn't scrape the wall multiple times, I don't I don't know how. He was within a paper, you know, width of hitting that wall every single time. Just absolutely wheeling the car. Great car control. If there's one thing I can say about Corey Day, that car was loose on corner exit, and he was driving the absolute wheels off of it. Saw the same thing down in turn two, same thing out of turn four. And over the first 100 laps, he learned a lot. And then in that second 100 laps, um, he he was really learning a lot. He was passing for second uh, when he clears himself, I assume, off of turn two uh, on the backstretch at Salem. Ends up not being clear of LeVar Scott right there. Hits the front of the six car. It goes up into the wall. And then he's, you know, doing one of the tank slappers down the backstretch and eventually goes up into the outside wall right there. Hard impact, you know, hard front impact for him. Tony Breidinger came flying in. She destroyed the rear of her race car, and that was just more of crash avoidance, but uh, it's Arca, right? So I don't, I, for her, it's unfortunate that that happened. I probably, you know, if she can go back and replay it, there's probably a better avenue for her to take to not end up in that situation, but, uh, you know, versus T boning the guy and sending him into Bolivia. Yeah, I, I don't think that that's you know, there, that was the option that she had right there. And she she took him, destroyed her own race car for that. But for Corey Day, up until that point, he was really, really coming on strong there at the end. I don't think he had anything for William Swalich. The 18 car, the Joe Gibbs racing car, was definitely the class of the field on Saturday night. There's no question about that. But for Corey Day, what I saw on Saturday night, his goal, uh, I watched the broadcast when I got home at 2 o'clock in the morning, and his goal for the race was to run all 200 laps, finish, I think, that he said like in the top 10 or the top eight or something like that. There were 
three cars on the lead lap at the end of this race. That's how this race went. But for him, he was definitely in position to finish P2. I don't think he had anything for Sawalch there uh, over the second half of that race. But for Corey Day, I think what we saw out of him on Saturday is super promising. Now he's going to get two more ARCA starts, one at Kansas, one at Bristol Motor Speedway as well. And I have a feeling we're going to see more of this kid on asphalt in 2025 as Hendrick Cars, Hendrick Motorsports continues to progress him in a direction I think they would like to take him. But from what we saw on Saturday night, yeah, the kids got what it takes to make the transition from dirt to asphalt. Now, of course, ARCA, I've talked about it a bunch of times, uh, really good equipment can mask deficiencies that a driver has. Completely understand that 100%. But for a guy that has, this is literally his second ever race on asphalt, to perform like he did on Saturday night, yeah, that's enough to go ahead and say that he's going to have what it takes and learn how to run these race cars um, when he needs to. Obviously, probably can't, I assume, cleared himself off a of turn two. Can't do that. In typical sprint car fashion, I think that if I'm thinking out loud here, it feels like, and maybe he just got loose. It's kind of difficult to tell, but it does look like he maybe just kind of clears himself on corner exit. And that works in sprint cars because you don't have this big ass hanging out the back here like a stock car <laughs> does. But yeah, I think that was the only mistake all night. And unfortunately, it cost him. It bit him, right? But that's a learning process. Up until that point, though, very fast, very quick learner, great car control. Would absolutely love to see more out of this kid on asphalt if that is the direction he wants to take his career. And I think, you know, Kyle Larson went to Rick and Jeff and Rick Hendrick and Jeff Gordon. So this kid's the real deal, and they're putting their money behind him right now, and I think that is a great step for Corey Day. So excited to see his next two ARCA starts as well. Um, let's talk about Salem Speedway real quick. If you haven't been to the famed high banks of Salem Speedway in Salem, Indiana, you absolutely have to make the trip sometime. It was 110th ARCA race at Salem, and when I talk about how much I love Salem, I, I think it's understated. Salem has never changed. I think my dad went there 30 plus years ago to watch USAC Silver Crown, probably even pit some race cars. I'm not really sure. It hasn't changed since then, and it probably will never change. There is a couple things I think Salem should change. Obviously, a capital, putting safer barriers around the entire track, that's just a capital improvement project that they literally cannot afford. So I don't think we're ever going to get that. Uh, the backstretch, though, they just basically use jersey barriers back there. Um, yes, that's bad because Corey Day at one point was pointed right at those. And that would have been re not a great situation. They're not straight. They're jagging. That's something that needs to get cleaned up at Salem, in my opinion. I would love to see a permanent wall be put back there. Um, but at the very least, those barriers need to be straightened and planted into the ground uh, to avoid something bad from happening. The rest of the racetrack, the fence. I mean, RIP Rich, Rich Vogler out of turn four right there. Fence is basically the same thing still. Uh, sketchy situation. Uh, but the facility overall, temper your expectations if you go because it's not a Bristol. It's not Daytona. It's not Indianapolis. It's not even IRP for that matter. It is. It feels like a high school football stadium in rural wherever you're from. Um, I say that having never gone to a rural high school in my entire life, but I've seen Friday Night Lights or something. So... You get the gist here. Wood bleachers, wood grandstand. Um, the bleachers, some of them are a little rotted out, but it's fine, right? You, you can find a spot to, to sit down there. Concession stands, just like you would expect at like a county fair or something along those lines. The bathroom situation, the bathrooms that are by the concession area, those are great. The ones that are, you know, set back by the ticket office. If you've been there, you understand you're you're peeing into a concrete trough in the men's bathroom, the women's bathroom. I can't speak for uh, because, well, I'm not a woman and uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't get the rundown from the girls yesterday, what the bathroom situation is, but Salem overall, I cannot say enough good things about this racetrack. The fans are engaged. The people that run the racetrack, super nice. Couldn't be nicer. The parking situation, really not that bad. Cleared out pretty quickly. Um, the hauler lot is literally in the parking lot where you also park your cars and that can get a little bit chaotic at the end of the race. I ended up stopping, um, Amber, Balkans, I can remember how to pronounce her last name, her 22 car, the tow truck driver just unstrapped it and left it. Well, car was in neutral. 
and uh yeah they're parked on a hillside on a gravel parking lot and it started to roll and i literally caught it like i was superman and her crew member came over and goes what the f is going on here and i was like buddy in the tow truck just dropped it didn't realize it was in neutral and i was like so i just stopped it and he was like i appreciate it and put it in gear so yeah but you can walk right through there you can get right up close if you want to see the haulers see the, the haves and the have nots basically heck you can even walk out on the racetrack after the race we we're just hanging out there and you can see from here we're just sitting up on pit road wall which is one of my favorite things about Salem. We've been going for years now at this point. Used to do a podcast sitting there, grabbing the young drivers. Ty Gibbs was on. Christian Eck is. Um, a number of other people that I'm blanking on right now. I think Michael Self was on at one point. So, yeah, it's just a fun overall time. 25 bucks to sit lower grandstands, $30 to sit upper grandstands. Easy night for the family if you want to take them out there. Uh, situation, everything about it is just a lovely short track experience and i constantly you know wear the shirt that says support your local short tracks say support your local short tracks definitely go out and support your local short tracks not just when arca comes there but when other you know events happen obviously salem is two and a half hours for me that's not something i'm doing every single weekend because it's just a heck of a drive but overall i enjoy salem speedway every single time i'm there Hopefully more people go out to places like Salem, Winchester, Anderson, Elko this upcoming weekend for ARCA Berlin, places like that, because I would hate to see ARCA leave these tracks eventually. I hope that someday they can attract a bigger type of event, whether that is like, you know, Cars Tour expands to the Midwest or heck, maybe even the Truck Series someday in a perfect world ends up going to a place like that. It's a fun time. Uh, pit Road's really tiny. I'll get that. Pit Road pit box. I don't know who measured them, but they were like, you get three inches on the front and the back. Okay, well, obviously, they're not competitive pit stops, so it doesn't really matter. But if you've been to Salem, let me know. Let me know in the comments what you thought about Corey Day's uh, debut, thoughts about Salem. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.